Hello, I'm Darby, and welcome to my school of hard sums. Now, I know that I'm a big math geek, and you may not be, and you may be wondering, why would I watch that? I suffered through that in school. Well, that's what we're testing here today. All those times that you were in school and you went, what is the purpose of this? We're going to find out if math really is more useful than just hammering away at a problem in some crazy random way. This show is a classic battle of brains versus brawn. Because when it comes to solving problems, I'm a firm believer in using maths. Maths is great. It can solve pretty much any problem from building bridges, ruining the NHS, or getting kissed at a disco. Tonight, I'll be using brain work and some pens to tackle three genuine real-world problems set by Oxford professor Marcus Asotoy. And my comedy guests will be using their brawn and whatever else is lying around to try and do the same. We've got a couple of math students present to keep me on my toes because none of us have seen the questions and we might not get an answer at all. But first, let's meet this week's guest, David O'Doherty. Are you ready for this, by the way? You've done, already done some prep work, uh, as ever, on this. You've done some, you know, leg work. I've, uh, well, I can write boobies and boobless on a calculator. <laughs> you know what number spells boobies? Um, it's, uh, well, it, well, upside down, <laughs> it's 8008, 105. 105. What, no, one three. Oh, goodness. You guys are, are no, better than me already. No, I'm not saying it's well, I'm sure there. the professor knows. Yeah, it's all about symmetry, you see. It's yeah. about those numbers which are... Uh, which are yeah, suitable. Yeah. Do you know the I mean, first number which um, has just rotational symmetry and no reflectional symmetry? No, I do not it's know. It's 69. Really? Yeah, an interesting fact about 69. Very, very good. Well, well, there are some others. That is probably the only interesting fact about that number. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, exactly. the, no, <laughs> that, that number has in any way featured on any programmes on Dave, <laughs> ever. Uh, and there's no comedy in that. Uh, let's, we really should move on. Uh, what's our common theme this week? This is the theme for this week is the mathematics of positioning. OK, yeah. fun. Yeah, so amazingly, we've actually got back to 69 already. We might go quickly. That just has turned out just quite tawdry. This one. It's not the best position. Uh, I love how sometimes uh, on people's email addresses, they, uh, they obviously registered this Yahoo address yeah. at the age of 16, and now they're uh, 24 and trying to get on in the world, maybe send out job applications, and the, their name will be like Brian Rogers, 69. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, <laughs> Super cock at uh, that's mine. If you want to, if you want to ask me any questions, that's my address. You can contact me at supercock at com. Right. So basically, it's going to be a positioning. What's the best stance to take, or the best physical position to take? It could be anything. We're things. going to do a variety of all of these. So, okay. Fine. Um, yeah, I'm going to take you through many positions in this show. Fabulous. So, um, I'm ready. Quite the work. I'm ready. Right, right, yeah. You're going to do it in the practical way. You've got to do abstract positions. Okay. So, fine. Um, what I'm sorry. is our first of our problem then? And we we'll see if we can hammer that. Okay. So to, to warm us all up, we've got a, a nice simple positioning problem. Yeah. I'm going to take you over to the, the yep. desk here to show you what you've got to do. So here we are. Romeo wants to get to Juliet. Yep. Yep. He's, uh, he lives pretty close, but he's got two rivers um, running between him and his love, Juliet. So the problem is where should you position the bridges such that Romeo can get to Juliet in the quickest time possible? And remember, the bridges have to go at a 90-degree angle, so you can't um, right. play around with the angles of the bridges. Oh, wherefore art thou Romeo? Well, Romeo is two rivers away from Juliet. And what Shakespeare never told you is that Romeo is able to single-handedly build bridges that can cross the rivers, but strangely, only at right angles to the bank. We need to work out where Romeo should build his bridges to make the shortest journey to Juliet. He will have to build two bridges. The obvious thing to do would be to start by just putting a line between them, which would be the shortest yeah. possible route. That, uh, that's very good. That's the, the definition of a straight line, is the shortest distance between two points. This could be a big breakthrough <laughs> for, for, not just for me, but for people who use bridges everywhere. <laughs> 28. 28. Well, I'm doing a 40, 40, different thing here. Uh, 44. Oh, very happy with this solution. One, what do you got? 40, 43. What, what, what are you doing, Darren? Right, I am removing the rivers. Ah, oh. oh, come on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, this is... Um, so I need to fold that this way. Right. I think if I remove the rivers... Uh, oh, my goodness. I know, thing. I know. Yeah, I see what he's doing now. Yeah. Right, and then we do this. I can't just is... copy it. No, you can't. That's the no, thing. No, it's a hit here. Even I if you try to copy it, I, I defy you to catch up with um, Barra's superb the... origami skills. Right. Uh, Whoa! Uh, <laughs> right. Uh, 
sorry. I've, don't you rush. What? Don't you really quickly Sarah, do this. Oh, this is... It's just this. Forget the origami. I can't believe this you're is, doing uh, that. Like that. This is a much neater way of doing it. Oh, I think I might have ruined this. Yes. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm so glad I came on your math show and not any of the other math shows in any other channels. I know, because <laughs> this match show is actually... Those ones are just poor imitations of other match shows. Right, I've got an, I've got an answer. I, I am now resting. I, is there a place for me to put my laurels because I'm resting? Uh, I well, I think I'm going to call time on this. How are the, ah, the math students doing? We drew a dotted line between Juliet and Romeo. Yeah, that's fair enough. And then um, kind of followed that... Until it got going, close to it. Yeah, exactly. You actually have loads of stuff scribbled down and everything. It's really, really good, yeah. You did nothing until I did something. I saw you folding, and yeah. then I decided that I would be more dramatic than that and uh, rip them out. So th that, is, that's, that is what I came up with there. It's quite impressive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's I'm, sort of a kit form. Right. I think, and I'm really happy with this, if you fold it, the, the point is to get rid of the river because no, you've no control. So it's a straight line down the river anyway because it's perpendicular. So that just adds to the journey no matter where you stick it. It's going to be the same place no matter on the river. So if you get rid of the river and draw a straight line directly to Juliet and then expand it out and stick the bridge there. It's beautiful. Thank you very much. Is yeah. it correct, though? I, I, it's uh, the correct answer, yes. yes. So, uh, I'd like to point out at this point that I'm good Don't at others. stop my applause. I'd like to point out that I'm good at other things in the world. I'm good with pets, I'm good at crazy golf, just stuff like that, just so you know. The same thing is I'm really, really proud of this. You're probably going to take that home? Yeah, I actually will, and I'll put it up in the house. I would take down my children's drawings, <laughs> and I would show them this, and I would go, this, I would lift up one of those and go, this does not look like me. I was being polite. Uh, and I'll put it down. And now, visitors to your house will see it and go, those O'Brien children, they're really... They're very, they're, they're they're very uncreative. Like, <laughs> yeah, they just like lines and circles. <laughs> Where are all the colours and the splashes of joy? And I would have taken them down because they weren't mathematical. <laughs> they were splodges. <laughs> and they were even between the lines. Marcus, do you have a question first? Yeah. Uh, this question is about positioning stars. I got four stars and I want you to produce a constellation such that all four stars are an equal distance from each other. And they have to be equidistant from each other? Yeah. So just put so, in a... Uh, 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 sounds pretty straightforward. Put them in a line? Well, it's... Uh, it's um, I, 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 oh, I'm not I can, saying I this is the tough question. That one immediately. Yeah. The, in, a, in a line would mean that... Uh, the ones farthest away from each other are equal distance. Oh, oh, I see. OK, yeah, yeah. And it would be, a, as constellations go, it would be a... People who go, there's, well, the, there's the line. There's that line. There's, there's Doherty's <laughs> line. Doherty's <laughs> line. <laughs> line. Weirdest line in the space because they're actually equidistant from each other. <laughs> and people go, no, no, they're not. Those ones are, and they go, no, no. Doherty said it. Doherty said it, and we believe the word of Doherty. It's the only magic eye constellation. You have to shut one eye and stare at it for a few minutes, and then you see what I mean. <laughs> My star sign is Gullibitarius, <laughs> and the symbol is a man buying a Rolex from a roadside vendor in Thailand. <laughs> <laughs> So, obviously, I can't bring uh, stars into the studio. So, we're going to represent the stars by cricket balls. So, I've got some cricket balls here on the table. So, how do you position a constellation of four stars equidistantly from each other? The handy thing about constellations is you can pretend they look like anything. These four stars could be my face, or a horseshoe, or David's hand, but none of these look equidistant. Equidistant. Equidistant, which what, means what, what, an equal it, distance from... Um, sorry. I know. OK, <laughs> it's, it's, okay. It's, it's the maths you remember. So, equidistant means the same distance apart? Yeah, OK. Exactly. <laughs> I was just making sure. Yeah. Well, then... So, you, yeah, you had a line to start with. Uh, that's, uh, so that's an, an equal distance from there. Yeah, that's an equal, that's an equal distance but from there. But that one... OK, yeah. so, well, well... Well, is the answer not obviously a square? OK, let's try then. a square. That's okay, a, good, so, a good one. So, look, but look, if I go like this... Yeah. Bang, bang... Here... So, so like that... Because yeah. then they're all equal distance from a point... Here. Like, I've played bools. And this seems to be um, a classic bulls. So a square seems like a scenario. Because this one's an equal distance. A square. Oh, <laughs> these, are, these aren't. It's not the most difficult question in the world. <laughs> if that's one unit of length, do you know what that length is? Um, yes, it is. It is more than a. It's a. It's. I guess it's called it a unit plus x. OK, let's take a break while David is trying to sort out that problem. It's not the last one he has to do either. There's a really big problem in the next part and see what he has to get up to solve that one. Let's do some bloody maths, yeah? Well, let's just test. Ladies, kiss the hot guy.
Welcome back to Darby and School of Hard Sums, the programme that pits me using brains against my fellow comic using brawn, in this case, David O'Doherty. In a battle to find out which method is best for solving the maths problems modern life throws at us all. Welcome back. Uh, I'm here from the School of Hard Sums with my Department of Mathematics, who are Graham and Innes, with Marcus of Soto, who sets the problems, but mainly with David O'Doherty. He's currently trying to arrange four stars. Let's see how he's done. So how do you position a constellation of four stars equidistantly from each other? Could you put David out of his misery, right? Okay, no, 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 I've got this. I'm, I'm very close to having this. Here's what we'll do, okay? You're ruining our Zen garden. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's the answer, my Not friend. Not bad. You're yeah. actually yeah. closer than you were a minute ago. Yeah. Uh, I, I like the flick of the hand. Yeah, well, it's it's backspin. It's, it's quite uh, the bull master. Bonjour. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. The um, key is they're not all in the same plane. Yep. What does that mean? They're not all just on the one level. Oh, not this rubbish. Yes, that rubbish. Yeah. Uh, oh, so it's like it's like a sort of pyramid shape. Yes. Yeah. There we go. So <laughs> like this. Yeah. Yeah. I've got it. That's very good. Yeah. Lovely. You know, I love that tone of voice you use. Yeah, thank for you. For me and for various three year olds. <laughs> yeah. Very good. I think great. You have coloured in oh. you've coloured in that some copy. I like the way Santa's face is blue. But can <laughs> I make one small suggestion? You, you're oh, disturbing wait, no. me, but oh, yes. Wait, no, hang on, if you're gonna get it. Then. I am gonna get it, yeah. No, you yeah. that really. Right. <laughs> if I'm just gonna say, just do that. Uh, <laughs> that's exactly the same thing. This right? guy's classy. Yeah, well, you know, I'm also lazy. Uh, and frankly, I'm standing there hovering while we did the explanation. Let yeah. me tell you another thing I'm good at. Uh, I used to work in a bike shop, so can you guys unbuckle a wheel? Probably not. Probably not. No, I can't unbuckle a bicycle wheel, but I do know what a tetrahedron is. It's a three-dimensional shape with four sides. So if you want the four stars to be equal distance apart, you first tackle three of them by drawing an equilateral triangle, and that'll be the base. And once that's done, jump off the page to float to the fourth on top. I think our students, by the way, got this instantly, uh, which is tetrahedron, all sides same length, drawings and there, even like a shaded like dotted drawing indicating the behind of the tetrahedron. This is proper work, well done. You, look at that, look at that. We got this so quickly, we were trying to be artistic. I, myself, drew a pyramid and then I drew a sphinx. Are we all digging on the ass of the sphinx? <laughs> yeah. How poor that is. What is that supposed Something to be? Something wrong with this What kind of crazy yeah. hump has my Manx sphinx got? <laughs> uh, so that's how much we were enjoying it. But, you know, they're, you know they're, that's all to play for because the big question is still to come. OK, Marcus, what is the big question? What is it about? Uh, the big question is all about kissing. What is the maths of kissing? What possibly, David, you've done something. What is the possible maths of kissing? Um, it's about how many kisses you can get in a short period of time, which sounds like something very wrong took It does place. sound really yeah. inappropriate. I'm telling well, you it's not inappropriate. It's story. all about the maths of positioning, and it's about uh, an end-of-term dance. There are 30 dancers, and you've got to find the best position to get the most kisses. And the rule is, when the music stops, you have to kiss the nearest person just like to in you. life, this is the rule <laughs> of all time. What end of term dances do you go to? <laughs> My recollection of end of term dances was more, was more of a magnetism thing, because I used to repel <laughs> as I passed through the room. They would bounce off me, uh, and they, I would create uh, like a force field around me of no kissage uh, in every direction. So this problem basically asks how many dances can stand closer to you than they are to each other. But unlike Puzzle 2, that talked about stars floating around the universe, we can't magically levitate dances above us to get extra kisses, and we'll have to keep everyone's feet on the ground. I'm really interested in the VT now. Yeah. Uh, I'm really interested in what, how we set up a situation with you, 30 women, and tape measures, uh, and then it just descended into sapphic joy. Ladies uh, love a retractable tape measure. <laughs> and as you're watching it, just remember, I did it for math. OK, let's have a look at it. I'm in a dance hall. I'm dressed as the Irish Fonz. And I've got a tape measure. Well, it's one for the money, two for the show. Three to get ready now, go, can't go, but don't let's you... do some bloody maths, yeah? Step on my blue suede shoe. Well, you can do anything but take me over my blue suede shoe. I mean, if you think about it, if there's a triangle of people and I can somehow be the one in the middle, I'm definitely going to be closer to them. So, yeah, I need to find three 
ladies to kiss me. OK, stop there. Oh, oh, you got, oh, sorry. No, you can get down. <laughs> OK, so um, if you move sort of to there, OK, potentially there, and if you were here, OK, and I was here now, this way I am getting three potential kisses, <laughs> which is, I think that's a result. <laughs> Those people who are in position, you're more than welcome to just, just come and get it. The D-man is here for you. <laughs> ah, OK, so, so three. <laughs> We've got three so far. OK, we'll try again, and I'll try and find a better position where I'm going to maximise the number of potential makeouts. Mm. In the interest of maths, let's dance. Go for the old, uh, I don't know, what's a, what's a fork? Uh, a hat trick plus one. That's what we'll go for. If there's a square of people and I'm right in the middle of the square, then they are going to be closer. I think they're going to be closer to me. I mean, you could put this down to pure maths, but also I think I look pretty incredible in this outfit. <laughs> so, 43. No, you, so you, can you move in a tiny, can you move in, yeah, four inches closer, and then here. Well, let's just test. Ladies, kiss the hot guy. <laughs> <laughs> Boom! The worst thing is with your beard, you probably didn't feel any of the kisses. They all count, they all count. <laughs> At the end of our lives, we're totting up our stats, then they all count. OK, just to settle this up, because I actually yeah, have to do absolutely. this thing now. Yeah, the, you uh, do. So uh, how many people are in the room? 30 people. There are 30, there are 30 points in space. 30 you points. You are another point in space. The, how um, dare you? You're more than that to me. Thank you. The, uh, <laughs> and the, uh, the, 30, the 30 points in space, you can kiss any of these 30 points in space uh, unless they are kissed by someone who's closer to them than you are. Yeah, exactly. OK, I'm going to have to try to see if I can find some way to do this. Um, I was doing pretty good there. You were doing Ma very mathematically, well. I was mathematically, using you were doing... square is certainly a, sa a word you'd use in maths. That's right. Good. Triangle. Yeah, triangle. Yeah. triangle yeah. Also. Hat, -trick. Hat trick is not really a word you use. <laughs> I'll give you that. Uh, I'm going to try to see if I can find any kind of way of doing this. Great, and, and I'm uh, going to take David over to the commentary box and, yeah. and, and, and we're going to laugh at what you're doing. Yeah, I think we'll find yeah, it quite tell funny. tell him the secret of my success. Yeah. <laughs> So this problem basically asks how many dancers can stand closer to you than they are to each other. And we'll have to keep everyone's feet on the ground. I was genuinely using maths here no, I could to see work that. this out. Yeah. I was trying to develop some sort of a theory about it that... Yeah, tell me yeah, what your theory okay, was. Yeah. Was that, OK, so I'm here in the middle, Green Man, Ireland, and uh, the trick is, so you've got a person who's a distance away here, yeah. Look, this is actual... I believe this to be actual maths. Yeah, that... that... I, I, mean, I mean, oh, so I used to work in a bike shop, so if we imagine this as the centre of a, a wheel, and then this is the rim of the wheel right here. OK, so we'll do a, a wheel around. And... I'm glad I didn't go to your bike shop. OK. <laughs> so you've got a spoke here from this person yeah. to this person. So that's the radius of your circle. Ah, radius. Oh, that's a technical, yeah. Okay, that's yeah. the radius, yeah. We call that or. Yeah. Then the distance from this person to another person needs to be a tiny bit longer than that. Very good. Yeah. So we'll call. The, so it's, got, it's going to have to be this and a bit. So I'll call that or plus a little bit. A bit. Yeah. Like that, and then you can keep doing that with here. Ar around. That was the principle that I was working yeah, on. Yeah, that, 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 that's, that's really nice because... It, uh, um, are you going to tell me, though, that there's ladies floating in space or something above oh, me? Or some, I don't know those ladies. You, ladies are definitely operate just on two dimensions. But it's an interesting question. Maybe we'll ask Dara that one later on. What <laughs> happens if you uh, go up into that dimension you have ladies on top of you? But, um, <laughs> uh, this is, um, uh, maths department, how many, uh, how many dimensions do ladies operate on? <laughs> Are the ladies two dimensions? Depends how you play your cards. <laughs> OK, OK. <laughs> so I can see Dara's furiously drawing circles and triangles. Should we go and have a look at what Dara's doing? Maybe he's cracked yeah. the lady yeah. formula. How many kisses have you got so far? Well, the way I'm doing it is, is you place them at regular intervals around. 
right? And then you work out what the distance between them is, and this gives you a triangle, this triangle here, right? And so, you, sorry, yeah, because that's the same and that's the same, and that, you, that means you can work out that distance there between them. Right, now, the distance between them is... Uh, B is equal to 2R sine alpha, right? And alpha is that, the gap between them, right? OK, this has to be greater than R because... So, in other words, the distance between the ladies has to be greater than the distance between Dave and the ladies, OK? OK, uh, we both have answers that we're quite giddy about because they involved actual work and stuff out. The, uh, let's see how Dave did on the day. Right, I'm pretty sure the answer to this is something to do with circles and people being uh, a distance away from me but slightly farther away from each other. It's 11 feet from the centre to the edge. So what I'm now going to do is move people like 11 feet one away from each other. Can you put your foot on that? Thank you. Madam, can you stand there? Can you put your foot on that for one second? Um, can everyone else uh, in here, can you all move back, please? I've done some measuring, and it's possibly not the most scientific of methods, but it's more fun than sitting there with elbow patches and your jacket sweating over some books. OK, I've calculated in as scientific a possible way what the maximum number of kisses I could get is, but, you know, I don't want to let you know what that is. So, someone kiss me, please. Oh, thank you, madam. Thank you very much. Oh, here we go. Uh, that's, so, oh, excuse me. Thank you so much. I, uh, doing all right, just a regular trip to the dance hall for the D-man, yeah? Thank you. Well done. Fantastic. Mr. Mr. Mm -hmm. Semifons. <laughs> Mr. Not Quite Fons. Mr. Yeah. Semifons, I don't want that nickname, please. <laughs> of course, one thing we have to stress in this is that while you were doing that, it wasn't under strict laboratory conditions, because what you were doing, you'd set out a ring around yourself and people would hover outside the ring, clearly closer to the ladies. In the ideal, they were like, thump, <laughs> they were a long way away. Were they? It, firstly, I'd like to say I didn't set out the ring, just the ring of ladies formed. <laughs> but there may have been people just outside of that who, yeah, weren't uh, sufficiently back. Yeah, but, it, but I was imagining a point in the middle and just the people I told yeah. on the rim so of the, this yeah, wheel. So we can ignore that they, were, they in the uh, ideal thing, would have been 10 miles away. Yes, they, yeah, exactly. exactly. Okay, but uh, they, they couldn't stay away. <laughs> <laughs> OK, I think, uh, well, David, I'm really... Intrigued to see what your answer was. So, how many did you manage? To, how many kisses did you manage to get? In as much of a laboratory as that was, the figure I came to was six and a bit ladies. Gosh. Well, well, well. Oh, that... There was six, and then there was space possibly for one more because okay. there was a degree of uh, moving Wiggle of the room. circle. Wiggle room. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, the maths department. What was your answer? Um, we've decided five. But six for an orgy. <laughs> OK. So you're all being really sleazy about this. Yeah. Uh, I, oh, wow. Dara, how many I'm not a greedy get? man. I'd be happy with five ladies. So I can reveal that the answer, the maximum number of kisses you can get under these conditions is, in fact, five. Thank you very much. Really? Thank, Thank you very you. much. So, okay. so, Dara, would you like to explain yes, why? The key is that the distance here between you and the ladies, which is the same, but yeah. you're the same distance from all the ladies, is less than the distance between the ladies. Yes. Right, now, where you did it, you had six and a bit. Six and a bit, interestingly, is the distance if you walk around the circle. Right, yeah, Because yeah. Uh, it's that, if that's or, then, as we all know from school, the whole distance around is two pi or, um, and that's 6.28 or... So you can fit six and a bit, ladies, if you're measuring it all the way around the circle. Right, However, yeah. we're not, because the line is a straight line between the two. So you actually have to have to measure this thing. This distance has to be bigger than the distance to you, OK? Right, yeah. So the next thing to try is five ladies, and every 72 degrees you can fit ladies in. So that's why the maximum you can have is five ladies. I mean, um... My point was basically that if you had everyone arranged in equilateral triangles, then not only would you be getting off with everyone else, but they'd all be getting off with each other as well, hence the orgy. Right, right. yeah, yeah. So if you all sit close to each other, then you all get off with each other. Yeah. It's happened. Yeah. Marcus, do you have anything to add to that? Well, I think in some ways uh, your mathematics made things more complicated. Are you saying this isn't the best way to do this? I don't want to spoil your workings, but let me okay. uh, show, show you on this show uh, board over board. here. A slightly 
Easy way to get um, exactly the same answer. So if you have three people, and this is you here in the middle, then an equilateral triangle will position you. Remember, an equilateral triangle, equal distance from each other, and the angle in an equilateral triangle is also always equal. It's 60 degrees. Um, but uh, you might lose these two kisses because they could be kissing each other. So you've got to push them a little bit further out. You will get a triangle which has a slightly larger angle than 60. And that will make sure that you get these two kisses. Right. So what you're into, let's, let's say that's 61 degrees. Yeah. OK. So how many degrees are there in a circle? 360. Yes. Yeah, 360. very good. Yeah, yeah. Work. A, a merit to the boy in the corner there. Yeah. Thank um, you. So the question is, how many of these triangles that then can I fit um, into the circle? So circles is absolutely right. So I've got 61 degrees. So I can put another one here, 61. I can put another one here. So I've got four kisses, one, two, three, four, four, three triangles. I can fit another triangle in, get five kisses. But if I try and put another triangle, I can fit another triangle here, but I will lose these two kisses if I do that. Yeah. So I'm not allowed this triangle. This one is not allowed. Ah. So I can only actually fit four triangles round with this angle a little bit bigger than 60, and I will then get each of these five kisses. Very good. And so that's why. Am I? Uh, am I so I'm there. There's yeah, the font, right the Irish font. <laughs> Looks to me like it's a cute angle. <laughs> oh, dear. But this does have real world applications. I mean, you might yeah. uh, what, think. What, pray tell. What real life applications would that Well, if you think about um, the way that these t uh, triangles are, are covering the ground, actually, yeah. we're very interested in your bathroom. You're interested in what sort of shapes can you cover the wall and not leave any gaps, for example. Right. So if an equilateral triangle, these ones where each of the sides is equal, you can actually cover beautifully your wall. But if you go to three-dimensional buildings, so architects are really fascinated in these triangles. They're very strong shapes, um, but also um, these strange triangles are quite important if you're making something like the Gherkin in the East End of London. Yeah. If you look at the Gherkin, it's full of these sort of triangles. They're not quite equilateral triangles, yeah. and you've got to kind of solve this problem about how to fit the triangles in to create a really strong and beautiful shape. So essentially, to cover a building which is curvy and twisted and shapely, you need to go away from the kind of equilateral yeah, triangles. And you, yeah, and you know on the um, Gherkin, there's only one piece of glass which is actually curved, and it's the piece at the top. All the rest are just flat pieces. But using these flat triangles, if you piece them together, you can create the illusion of uh, there being a curved surface. So these are really essential shapes for the architect. Very good. All that's left, by the way, and exempting me from it, because I'm very happy with it, but I took too long a route around it, who's going to win? Well, um, I, I think uh, the winner does have to be Darrow, because um, uh, you got the right answer. It's about the right answer, Skip. I mean, uh, beautiful solution. Uh, I can't win my own yeah. show. <laughs> uh, yes, Brain has won this week, although Brain didn't get kissed. So there's probably the greater, greater message from this, which is Braun, the smaller guy, uh, and wins the uh, win, ladies. OK, take that away uh, as a message. Also, give thanks, by the way, to our generally dominant Department of Mathematics. Give them a round of applause. Innocent Graham, thank you very, very much. Uh, to our non-mathematical lord of the dance, David O'Doherty. Thank you very, very much. And to our question setter and expert extraordinaire, Professor Marcus Sosa. <laughs> we'll see you next time. We don't have mass will triumph again, but good night, goodbye, good luck. I'm Darby. See you again. Yeah. Here's a final route for you to get to grips with. Can you connect all nine dots with only four straight lines without taking your pen off the paper and without going back over yourself? If you want to see that question again, check the answer or just cheat, have a look on the website, joindave.co.uk.